Sony, the maker of the iconic gaming system PlayStation, introduced its new virtual reality headgear at CES this week, as the battle for tech companies to compete in the metaverse, a virtual world of work and pleasure, heats up. According to industry research, the virtual reality and augmented reality markets are expected to grow to nearly $600 billion by 2025, and announcements of new products from big-name companies like Sony, Lenovo, HTC, Panasonic, and others at the annual trade show in Las Vegas indicate robust consumer demand for reality-altering products. Welcome to today's AI News. In this episode, I'll show you all the technologies that are posed to make virtual reality go mainstream within the next few years. During a CES presentation, Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, stated that the Sony PlayStation VR 2 will usher in a new generation of VR games that will allow players to feel a greater sense of presence and become more immersed within their game worlds once they put on the headset and wield the controllers. Sony did not provide a release date for its VR 2, but did state that it will include eye tracking technology, headset feedback, and 3D audio, allowing players to feel the elevated pulse of their gaming character during tense moments of action or experience the wind created by an object passing close to the character's head. Sony has announced that its new virtual reality headset will be compatible with the PlayStation 5 platform. The popular game, Horizon Call of the Mountain, is also being developed specifically for the VR 2. When Meta's declared its commitment to creating goods for the metaverse last year, it also announced an exclusive contract to make a version of Grand Theft Auto for its Oculus 2 headset. The Oculus Quest 2 VR gadget from Meta was a holiday blockbuster, and its recent popularity should augur well for the plethora of virtual reality and augmented reality products on the horizon. This year, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and other major technology companies are anticipated to unveil VR spectacles. Last year, the Consumer Technology Association, which organizes and conducts CES, forecasted that by 2022, more than 100 million Americans will be first-time VR users. Over a third of Americans currently use virtual reality items at least once a month. HTC's virtual reality concept goes beyond headsets. The Taiwanese smartphone manufacturer launched a wireless wrist tracker for the Vive Focus 3 headset this week at CES. We're already witnessing how hardware is getting smaller and sleeker, while software is getting quicker and more sophisticated," Shen Yi, HTC's global head of hardware, told CBS News. The tracker was created to enable interacting with and working in virtual reality more convenient and engaging. HTC collaborated with XR Health, a virtual clinic company, to help with virtual environment design, and Axon, a producer of smart trackers, to build trackers particularly for health firms. In addition, the firms created virtual treatment rooms that provide physical and occupational therapy, as well as pain management and physical training. Providing virtual therapy for patients will enrich all physician practices by providing the most creative solutions to anybody, anyplace, XR Health CEO Iran Orr said in a statement. Canon, widely renowned for its picture and video cameras, also revealed a virtual reality headgear design at CES. The gadget, dubbed Kokomo by the business, mixes immersive 3D experiences with video calling. Canon claims that their software would allow users to view loved ones face to face instead of seeing avatars while communicating with pals in the virtual world. We wanted people to forget they were wearing a virtual reality headset, Canon's senior innovation designer, Jason Williams, said in a video statement. We learned how important it is to observe your own live look, mannerisms, and attire. Characters or avatars are not permitted. What makes this so wonderful is the opportunity to make eye contact with the individuals we care about," he continued. While Sony, Meta, HTC, and Canon are promoting VR headsets, Panasonic, TCL, and Cura Technologies are developing lightweight spectacles that incorporate features of virtual and augmented reality. This week at CES, Panasonic unveiled the second generation of their VR glasses. The Megane X, which will cost $900 when it is introduced this spring, weighs less than 9 ounces and features a built-in function that will allow nearsighted people to use it without glasses. Panasonic's Megane X is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon XR1, a smartphone processor that is also utilized in the MetaQuest 2 and HTC's Vive headsets. 
The glasses can also be folded and have speakers built in. Panasonic promised further information regarding the device's controller before its release later this year. TCL, which manufactures televisions, announced its entry into the virtual and augmented reality worlds, as well as the unveiling of its first smart glasses at CES. The Chinese electronics makers Linyao AR smart glasses are still in prototype mode, but a teaser video suggests the glasses are lightweight and can be used to call into business meetings, shoot and share images, react to text messages, and display turn-by-turn -turn directions for your surroundings. The glasses can also link to streaming services to watch movies and TV shows, and they come with wireless controllers for video games. Our smart glasses will allow you to leave your phone in your bag pocket or even drawer, keeping you on top of your digital life in a rich, seamless way, TCL Chief Marketing Officer Stefan Streit said in a video release. Consumer electronics top companies aren't the only ones experimenting with virtual and augmented reality items. Cura Technologies, a Silicon Valley firm and one of the CES 2022 Innovation Award recipients, is developing lightweight augmented reality glasses called, Gallium. Cura claims their glasses weigh less than 3 ounces and offer a 150-degree field of view, allowing for a broader range of vision and viewing material at arm's length. According to the business, the augmented reality glasses might also replace standard Skype and Zoom calls. The quantity of virtual reality and augmented reality goods shown at CES this year suggests that the trend will continue. The worldwide virtual reality industry may rise from $6 billion in 2021 to more than $80 billion by 2028, according to Fortune Business Insights. According to some industry analysts, the mobile augmented reality business will increase from over $12 billion in 2020 to approximately $200 billion by the end of the decade. The good news is that, in terms of technology, today's VR systems are light years ahead of their predecessors. Many newer systems have realistic visuals and motion capture, and there are some very outstanding games and entertainment apps available. There are worse ways to spend a few hundred dollars than on an entry-level virtual reality headset if you're a gamer, a movie enthusiast, or simply a person suffering from cabin fever in quarantine. The bad news is that V is still not what sci-fi movies taught us to expect, a totally immersive experience that transfers us to another realm and bestows us with all manner of virtual superpowers. Even the most advanced systems lack certain fundamental capabilities, and aside from gaming, there isn't much you can do with a virtual reality headset that you couldn't do more simply on another device. For decades, augmented and virtual reality remained tech novelty items, even at tech shows such as CES. Devices were frequently clunky, with low-fidelity displays and inadequate software. However, this year's presentation suggests that virtual reality and augmented reality are the future of consumer technology. Customers might expect software to provide seamless experiences that make them feel as though they are in the real world. There will be no apparent delay, and the gear will be portable enough that you may enjoy these immersive experiences from anywhere. So, what is your opinion the prospect of virtual reality going mainstream within the next five years with all this new and constantly improving hardware coming out? Do you believe that VR in its current form even has the ability to go mainstream in the first place? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.